<laughs> Review for Time Cop. Van Damme, 1994, directed by Peter Himes. So the synopsis, Max Walker, Van Damme, an officer for a security agency that regulates time travel, must fend for his life against a shady politician who's intent on changing the past to control the future. And that pretty much sums it up. Um, so Van Damme is 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 i think like a dc cop and in the very beginning of the movie he's with his wife uh mia sarah and um and you know they're like at the mall and stuff and then he notices some guys are following him and then um soon after he's in his house and he gets attacked at his house and they drag him outside, and then, um, but then some of them go back in the house, and then the house explodes, and his wife dies. And before that, he mentions that he got a big job offer, a big opportunity, and that, that he's going to take it. And you you get the feeling he works a lot, she doesn't want him to leave, but he, he wants to go to work. And then I think earlier... They, uh, the, the movie opens on, um, uh, uh, soldiers during, uh, the 16, during the 1800s, and this guy has these laser guns, and he mows down a bunch of soldiers, and he is stealing a bunch of gold. Um, so people are using this, this time machine that was invented by some academic, they're going back into the past so that they can get a lot of them get rich in the future. And there's this shady politician who's doing that so that he can become uh, president of the United States. And this guy, uh, Ron Silver, um, he, he is like a senator and he's offered um, to like head the committee that oversees the time police. So he'll corrupt it within. So, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big Van Damme fan, uh, especially like Bloodsport, um, Kickboxer, especially Bloodsport. That movie is really awesome. Uh, Universal Soldier, I really like. Um, he he's he's got a lot of good action movies. You know, back in the you know the early '90s, and um. This is one I just never saw for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, maybe someone told me it wasn't good. I don't know. But, you know, it's a pretty good movie. Uh, Peter Himes is actually a pretty legit director. I mean, he directed 2010, The Year We Make Contact. Uh, I'm a big fan of a 2001 A Space Odyssey. I, I love Stanley Kubrick's work. But, you know, that's a movie I even... I'm like, you know what? It's okay. It's not as good as 2001, obviously. He's no Stanley Kubrick, obviously, but um, he does a pretty good job directing it, and it's a pretty entertaining movie. So, and and apparently when he when when they were gonna make it, and he wanted to make it, he he called Stanley Kubrick and talked to him, and he like asked if he could do it, and he said, "Yeah, sure," and he gave him basically his permission to do it. So he's like, "Just do your own thing. Don't try to copy what I did," and he and he didn't. And I think it's a it's a solid movie. So. You know, this guy's a solid director. Uh, he did Outland, which I also like. Um, I think 2010's his best movie. Uh, he did The Relic. I don't know if I've seen that. But, um... Okay, Capricorn 1. I don't think I've seen that. So, but anyways, you know... Decent director. Oh, he did Sudden Death, too. Okay, I like that, too. Um, although there's some bad um, stunt work in that, because Van Damme didn't want to do some of the stunts or something, because he was having problems by then, I think. But uh, he did End of Days. Uh, I like that movie, too, with Arnold. So, solid director. 
Uh, I think he did a pretty good job on Time Cop. I don't have many complaints about the movie. There is, like, a plot hole, I think, that I'll get into that is kind of bad because it's pretty important. I mean, I could be wrong, but I just it just seems to me like a giant plot hole. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, you know... I think the end of the movie, for some reason, like, it's like the last 20 minutes, it's all in this, it's all in his house, uh, Van Damme's house, they go back there, and, um, for some reason, it's just shot, it's very dark, like, and, and it's like a key action set piece, I don't really know why, um, I don't know, maybe Van Damme didn't want to do some of the stunt work in this, too, but, um, that was a complaint because it, it it's it's all it's very it's shot very dark. The rest of the movie I thought was shot fine. It's actually a really good looking movie, up until like the last twenty minutes. I just I don't know. I thought that was kind of strange. So, um, I'm not gonna go through you know all the plot and everything, but, um, you know like he has he had a partner in the beginning of the movie. He goes back and chases him because he he goes bad. He goes rogue. He's trying to get super rich. He then he catches them like it's like 1929. Like I think right when the stock market's crashing. So this guy's going to buy all these stocks super low and then go back into the future. And they're going to be worth tons of money. And then he's going to sell them all. And he confesses to him that he's working for Ron Silver, who's the senator. And he's like, he's like, this guy's going to own the whole country, like, in a few weeks. He's going to be president. Um, you know, like, you might as well get on board with him. And, and he controls the uh, time police. But he doesn't care. He's going to bring him back. He wants him to testify. But he brings him back, he won't testify. And they, like, and in, in this world, they have these this secret court. And, they, and then they find him guilty, and they instantly kill the guy. Um, I guess because they're too dangerous. But it, I was just like... Okay, there's no appeals at all. Like it's like instant. Like like they're like you're guilty, okay, guilty, and then and then, and then they kill him. But um, so yeah, so John Claude Van Damme's boss is Bruce McGill, and then kind of his boss is the senator Ron Silver. Uh, Bruce McGill, you know, really good actor. Uh, I've always I've always liked him in pretty much everything I've seen him in. He's in The Insider. That's right, Animal House. Um, he's in a bunch of stuff. Lincoln. Cinderella Man. That's right, Collateral. Right. Really good actor. Uh, you get the feeling that he isn't corrupt. And... Um, he is trying to convince him that the, that the senator is bad, and uh, you know later on you you find out more. But um, yeah, solid movie, solid action movie, uh, except for the last like twenty minutes. I didn't really like how it was shot. It's still entertaining, but I thought it could have been shot better. But um, overall, yeah, I like the movie. So uh, I'll, I'll get into spoilers now. Um, so yeah, he's trying to convince him that that uh, Ron Silver is 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 corrupt, and he doesn't really buy it. But then um, later on, he does buy it because he, he's trying to su shut down the time cops, the time police, and then he he helps him go back into the past again to uh, retrieve this this girl who turned corrupt too. But he thinks she's still alive, so she could testify against him. So. So yeah, and and then overall, he then um, you know confronts Ron Silver, and one of the rules is you can't be in the same space at the same time. So Ron Silver is kind of going back to his old self and telling him to do certain things so that he can get super rich in the future of two thousand four, which is pretty hilarious. But it's nineteen ninety four. So it's ten. It's like ten years in the future that this time machine uh, exists, and um, he's doing that. And then Van Damme's kind of tracking him down, 
And in the end, they're back in his house, just like in the beginning of the movie. Um, but like a major plot hole, I think, is that he... So at the beginning of the movie, his wife is killed inside his house. There's an explosion that goes off. In the future, they have a bomb. But in the beginning of the movie, the explosion goes off right when they go in the house. He's right outside. So it kills his wife. Explosion goes off. It kills the henchman, too. But it's like, wouldn't Ron Silver know that um, it didn't kill Jean-Claude Van Damme? I mean, why would they even go there, then, just to kill his wife? Because it doesn't really accomplish anything. So that doesn't make sense. And also, one of the rules is, is that uh, you can't go into the future because it hasn't been set yet. But then how did they... How did he go into? How did, why did he send these henchmen back to 1994 to kill his his wife and him if the if, if they weren't in the future to send them back? So I don't know. A lot of times, you know, time travel movies. If you think about it, they don't really make much sense. Um, I think one of the most solid ones is probably the first Terminator, but even that has some problems. But um. So I think that's kind of a problem. And also right away, they go right into the house, like very quickly, the house just blows up. And it's very quickly, but then when the in the end of the movie, like the bomb is set for like five minutes, but it seems like, it seems like <laughs> that there wasn't that five minute countdown at all at the beginning. Um, but yeah, so. But, um... So the movie the movie did pretty well. It grossed 101.6 million. So it says this is the second solo hero movie of his to cross 100 million. And this is the first movie for action star Van Damme and director Peter Hybes. They followed up cooperation with Sudden Death and Enemies Closer. 2013. I never saw that. I don't know. That's kind of when his career wasn't very good, so... I don't know if that's good, but uh, I, I like Sudden Death. It almost worked out a movie in between called Abominable before it was cancelled. Van Damme later credited Heim as the only person who came to visit him okay well he was in the hospital the first this is based on a dark horse, uh, dark horse comic book series of the same name never read it oh 2004 max's hairstyle was partially influenced by wolverine from the x-men comics max also wore wolverine brand work boots yeah Yeah, he's got a pretty cool mullet in the movie. <laughs> I, I do have to say. Pretty awesome mullet. In the fight scene, the last act of the movie of the film, Van Damme's stunt double was used to create the illusion of the younger Max Walker. Oh, maybe that's why it's kind of dark. I don't know. That's pretty that's kind of my main criticism and the plot hole. But uh, the film had a short-lived TV series in 1997 and a direct-to-video sequel in 2003 called Time Cop, The Berlin Conspiracy, starring Jason Scott Lee and Thomas Ian Griffith. Neither the show or the film have any links to the 1994 film. Yeah, it was spun into a TV series on ABC three years after the film that took place in 2007. The guns used by most of the characters in the movie are actually Beretta's 92FS's and HK's MP5 models with some extra stuff added to the end of the barrels. 
The film can be seen as a study of free will versus predestination and parallel time universes. So, yeah, so uh, Ebert, uh, Roger Ebert wasn't a big fan. He gave it two out of four stars. But I don't think he's a big, uh, you know, <laughs> Van Damme fan. But yeah, he points out some of the plot holes, and it's it's true. But I, I, I liked it more than him. I mean, I'd at least give it three out of four stars. But, I mean, it's a time travel movie, so it's going to have a lot of plot holes. Um, but, you know... I liked it though, so, uh, but yeah, Time Cop, 1994, um, if you haven't seen it, check it out, if you're a fan of Van Damme, uh, or, uh, you know, these old action movies, um, you know, it's a pretty good time, it's not that long, so, it's not that long of a movie, but, uh, yeah, that's about it though, um, comment below if you're a fan of the movie, or uh, if you're a Van Damme fan. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time.